much. I'd like to thank um, Sages and Dr. Horvath and Dr. Vollmer for inviting me and for um, bringing these two societies together to talk about a very important topic. Um, I have nothing to disclose. So briefly, we're going to talk about the challenge that is pancreatic cancer. Um, our noble leaders here came up with trick or treat. Um, I like that. So we'll talk about IRE, and then we'll talk a little bit about trick or treat. Um, IRE versus the standard of care management, and is IRE truly minimally invasive? So pancreatic adenocarcinoma is a difficult disease. Ten people come into your office with pancreatic adenocarcinoma. Two of those will be able to go right to surgery because they have resectable disease. About five of those ten people will end up having either metastatic disease or locally advanced pancreatic cancer and likely never make it to the operating room. And then there's the three people with either borderline or misrepresented as being borderline but really have locally advanced pancreatic cancer and with neoadjuvant therapy may be able to make it to the operating room. The sad thing is that we know that the best treatment for pancreatic cancer is getting an R0 operative resection, and we can't get enough of these patients to the operating room to do that for them. The median survival of somebody is not able to get to the operating room is about 8 to 13 months with only chemotherapy plus or minus radiation, and that's using the modern regimens that we're currently using that are much more effective than what we were using even a decade ago. But in the end, only about 40% of these locally advanced or borderline patients will make it to the operating room. And once we get there, only about 50% may be resectable because we find METs at that point or we find what we thought was borderline was, in fact, locally advanced pancreatic cancer. There are many different definitions, excuse me, of locally advanced pancreatic cancer, but to make it as simple as possible, it is basically when the celiac access or the superior mesenteric artery has greater than 180 degree circumferential wrap of tumor or long portions of the hepatic artery, um, or when there's no really proximal branches of the superior mesenteric vein to anastomose to be able to take the portal vein SMV and do a resection. That's the basic definition. We know that thermal ablation has been used effectively in a lot of solid tumors. Um, it's limited by the destruction that it does cause to vasculature and other structures, but we know it to be effective. IRE is kind of a response to this. It's a non-thermal ablative technology, and its goal is to destroy tumor but not destroy the extracellular matrix of key structures. Because when we're talking about a tumor in the head of the pancreas as opposed to a tumor in the periphery of the liver, we're talking about a tumor that's sitting at the crossroads of our digestive system. You have your bile ducts, your pancreatic ducts, you have your celiac artery, superior mesenteric artery, your portal vein, not to mention your digestive contents passing through. So thermal ablation to any of those, um, those structures is catastrophic. So excuse the um, elementary um, diagrams here. I don't get funded by angiodynamics, so I don't have these um, beautiful um, pictures. But um, here we have our locally advanced pancreatic cancer. Um, it's involving the celiac, the superior mesenteric, and the hepatic artery. This is a locally advanced tumor, nothing that you could operatively do for this patient, and their average survival would be less than a year on best systemic therapy. What you can do with IRE is you bracket these tumors with 19 French needles, pretty big needles, and you bracket these. And then using the IRE generator, um, NanoKnife by Angiodynamics, that's the um, commercially available device, um, you pass 1,500 to 3,000 volts between needle pairs. And what this does is it causes nanopores in the cells within the tumor. These nanopores then give rise to cell dysfunction and apoptosis, and as a result, you get tumor death over a period of about three months. Um, but again, the benefit is that the extracellular matrix of blood vessels, of ducts, stay intact because, in theory, there is no thermal um, attack. And with time, these ducts will, for example, the artery will redevelop its endothelium and be fully functional. Um, it could be used in situ, but it could also be used in margin extension. Here's just an example of doing IRE, going forward and doing a Whipple, 
and your feeling is that, yes, this is an R1 resection, but by doing the IRE in advance, what we're doing is treating any residual um, tumor cell. So this is an example of a case. This is a patient who presented in March of 2011. Um, he originally had about an eight, uh, excuse me, seven centimeter tumor. You can see it's in this area over here, and it's right at the um, splenic vein in the same imaging. This is after his neoadjuvant therapy. You can see both the celiac and the SMA are encircled fully by tumor. And this is two years later um, on a PET. I you know, tried to really, oh, excuse me, um, tried to make sure those calcifications in his um, aorta were visible so you could see it is in fact is the same patient. Um, two years later, he has no PET avid disease in the pancreas. Um, and then going about a year and a half later, his tumor finally recurred. You see a liver met right above the tip of that um, um, bile duct stent, and he actually passed away about two weeks ago. But of his nearly five and a half year battle with pancreatic cancer, he was only getting chemotherapy for nine months. Um, he started chemotherapy um, this past September when we had pet-avid recurrence. So this was one of the first studies by Martin and colleagues that came out in 2013. And what he did was they prospectively looked at patients that had locally advanced cancer um, at a few different sites. And after the patients had chemotherapy and radiation, some got IRE, some didn't get IRE. This speaks to one of the big biases in this paper is that this wasn't a randomized study in any way and how exactly they determined who was going to get IRE and who wasn't. Um, but what we did find is that 12 months after their IRE, 80% of people were alive in the group that got IRE versus 50% in the non-IRE group, which is exactly what would be expected in the non-IRE group. And this um, brought out a lot of enthusiasm for IRE. This was followed up a few years later by a large registry series, um, 200 patients at six different centers undergoing IRE, and they reported a median overall survival of 20, nearly 25 months in this group. And you can see here the curves between resection with IRE um, and then the in situ group, no resection, just leaving the tumor in place. Um, when you comb through the paper a little bit more, we see that the survival in the curve that they show is really the survival from diagnosis and not the survival from IRE. Typically in surgery, we report our survivals and our recurrence-free survivals from the time that we do our procedures. So when you look at the curves again, and this is just a little extrapolation, the in situs were around 17 months median overall survival, and the resections was about 23 months overall survival, with a 24% grade three to five complications, which is, we all know that pancreatic surgery is complicated. Um, this is a little bit more highly complicated, um, but they reported a 2% um, grade five, which is 2% mortality rate. Um, in their series. So these seem exceptional. So how do these compare to other series? So this is the MGH experience, 550 patients over 15 years. And looking at R0s and R1s, they basically reported a median survival of between 14 and 23 over five years. And this is basically all stage one and stage two disease. Um, this paper actually splits out all the locally advanced patients and um, separates them out. So this is really what we're looking at is a median survival, you know, about 18 months after um, Whipple's, distals, but in essentially your stage one and two tumors as opposed to locally advanced, which is considered a stage three. This is the memorial experience, um, double the um, MGH experience, a little bit over 1,100 patients. They report a median overall survival of 24 months, but this is very important because this is only those patients that already lived the first year. And 25%, as you can see in the table um, on the right, in the, in the bar graph, excuse me, on the right, um, died within the first year of surgery. So this overall survival in patients that could undergo resection, again, basically your stage one and stage two patients, um, of 24 months is only after excluding the people that died in the first year. So I'm bringing these two to light because what we're looking at is in the IRE studies is the most advanced pancreatic cancer, the most aggressive tumor biology, the literally unresectable tumors, 
and we're trying to show with IRE that these people are living just as long as people who have much less advanced disease. And that really should spark a lot of questions in the mind of the pancreatic surgeon. So we looked at our experience with IRE at Columbia, and we published this in 2016. And our primary outcomes were on 90-day morbidity and mortality because we weren't getting the same um, rates of complications as was being published in the other series. We were having much worse outcomes. And then our secondary outcomes were survival and recurrence. So we looked at 50 patients, 98% of them had adenocarcinoma. Almost all of them received neoadjuvant therapy and radiation. Um, from our survival analysis, we excluded patients who had um, the neuroendocrine tumors, just to say so. About 17% excuse me, were readmitted, which is you know, on par with pancreatic surgery, advanced pancreatic surgery, something we're all trying to get down, but this is a reality. But we had an 11% mortality rate, which is obviously much higher than the 2% mortality rate um, presented in the bigger series. It's a horrific mortality rate for pancreatic surgery. It's an embarrassing um, for pancreatic surgeons, not to mention how horrific it is for the patients who obviously succumb to the operation. Um, but it is on par with large meta-analyses and large studies looking at arterial reconstructions and um, arterial resections in the form of Appleby procedures. Um, so for very complicated locally advanced pancreatic cancer, there have been reported to be anywhere from 8 to 25 percent mortality rates in those groups. And in terms of grade 3 and grade 4, meaning needing some kind of interventional procedure um, under anesthesia or not under anesthesia or critical time in the ICU, we had a 19 percent um, rate. When we looked at overall survival, what we found was that the overall survival for the patients that had resection, meaning removing of the tumor and IRE, was far superior than the poor outcomes in the patients where the tumor was left in place. Um, this was from the time of the IRE after a median of 8.4 months of neoadjuvant therapy. But this is really the issue with locally advanced pancreatic cancer. We could get primary control over these tumors, but it's metastatic disease that kills these patients. So looking at the table on the left, looking at our survival curve on the left, we see our local recurrence rates were pretty good after IRE. IRE does kill tumor. It does work. For our um, resections, we didn't reach our median, and I'll show you more up-to-date data in a second, but for our tumors that were left in situ, um, it was really about seven months um, if you kind of, you know, really look at the curve, and there's just a few patients left there at the end, and that's why it drops off so much later. But it's really about distant recurrence that kills patients with pancreatic cancer. So distant recurrence probability, um, you could see that really we start seeing our metastases about six to nine months after the patients are off of systemic therapy. And no matter how good IRE is at killing the local tumor, it's the distant tumor that's going to kill these patients. And when you look at Martin's Oh, sorry. When you look at Martin's study, they also had local pre, um, progression free interval of only about 11 months. So, sorry, the screen's just flashing here. For only about 11 months. So they also had um, tumor coming back around the same time we had tumor coming back, but ironically, they had tumor coming back distally at a much longer interval than we did, which points to an issue of probably selection. So what was our message? We basically found the majority of our mortalities occurred in those that were treated in situ. Um, five out of six of the mortalities occurred in that group. Um, what we found that this was mostly gastrointestinal bleeding, ulcerations and perforations of the duodenum, and thromboses of the venous structures. And we were not able to rescue these patients from their bleeding. We do somewhere between two and 300 pancreatic surgeries a year. We're able to rescue pretty well. And these patients could not be rescued by any means. Um, we need to weigh our complications in terms of the benefits to the patient. Um, so the primary control group did not hit their median overall survival. The insight 2 did. And the insight 2 had much more complications than the resection group. So this points to the resection probably being the way to use IRE, not using it in site 2, at least in our experience. But um, nearly 50% of patients develop distant metastases. And this is really the key point. So this is just an update. This is now we're at 81 patients. Um, we're still seeing that those who have resection and 
IRE still aren't meeting. Um, we still haven't met their median survival yet. But the in situ tumor patients, basically, we're still at the same number. We're recurring basically around nine months. Uh, I mean, excuse me, they're passing away at around nine months. Um, our complication rates have gone down. Um, we have a 17% from about 21% grade three to four. Our mortality rate, excuse me, is seven from 11%. We haven't had another patient pass away, um, but we're still hampered by this high mortality rate from early on in the learning curve. And these, sorry, these are in the wrong place when I converted to the widescreen. But what we've also done is we've flipped. We're doing much less um, in situ tumor treatment and focusing more on treating IRE patients and then resecting. And we think that has a lot to do with our better outcomes, both in terms of survival, but also in terms of number of complications. I'm gonna make this very quickly. Is, um, is this a minimally invasive approach? I don't know if I fear or envy anybody who's willing to put six 19 French, I mean, excuse me, 19 gauge needles through and through the stomach into the pancreas past all that vasculature um, under a CT guidance and ultrasound guidance. Um, I think I kind of fear them. Um, but they conclude in their series that the main, this is the biggest series that's done, been done percutaneously. It's a prospective trial. I can't figure out at all how they selected their patients from their paper, but they basically say the main results of our study indicate that percutaneous IRE for locally advanced pancreatic cancer should be considered a, a relatively high-risk procedure. Um, I'm going to agree with that. I don't think this should be done percutaneously in any way. Um, it may be able to be done laparoscopically. Some people have been doing that, but um, not going there. So in summary, IRE, it is an effective ablative technique. There's no question about that. Um, it's probably better suited for margin extension than for in situ. Um, that's based on the complications and also on the long-term outcomes that we've been seeing. It can add to local disease-free survival, but does it really impact overall survival over current standard of care, best systemic therapy um, is very hard to determine. Um, and it is not a minimally invasive surgery. Pancreatic cancer remains a systemic disease. So trick or treat, um, it really depends on whether you get a complete response and you don't develop distant metastases. And the unfortunate thing is right now we don't have any good models that help us make that prediction. Um, who's going to develop distant disease and who's just going to stay local regional. And until we are at that point, our center is still using IRE in very selected cases and we feel that we're able to do it more safely than we were earlier in our experience. Um, but again, we're moving away from in situ and only doing it when we're able to remove the entire tumor at the time of the operation. Thank you.